If there was one book I'd recommend on scaling a startup or any company past 10 customers, it would be Four Disciplines of Execution. Implementing the systems in this book has had more to do with the number of things I'm able to get done in each day and thus each week um, than, than anything. What it's about is how to motivate a team, how to create a system so that your team can actually deliver. And in this book, the three authors go over this exact system step by step. So without any further ado, let's jump into the four disciplines of execution. Discipline number one is focus on the wildly important. The rule of thumb in management consulting is you only really improve what you measure and it's no different in this book. So we start out by identifying what we want for X27, we have two things that we want. One is sales, so making sure that we always have a consistent pipeline of new business coming in. And then the second one is production, so making sure our production team's always able to deliver on time. So those were the two most important tasks that we identified would be the biggest drivers to our business. And then after that, we jump into discipline number two. Discipline number two is focus on lead measures. There are two different types of measures, and Cal Newport in his book, Deep Work, was the first time I heard this, but this is the original book that it comes from. He says there are lead measures and lag measures. Now, most of the goals that we set in business are gonna be lag measures. I know that it was for me. So for instance, on the sales side, I had a lag measure of five closes per week. What I didn't realize or what didn't click right away was five closes per week isn't in my control at all, right? That has a lot to do with how the clients react and all this other stuff. So what he says to do and what we did is we took that goal and we walked it backwards. So instead of five closes per week, we figured out how many meetings do we need to get those five closes per week? And we realized at a 25% close rate, that is 20 meetings per week that we need in order to keep those five closes, five new business signings per week there. So 20 meetings per week. There's the lead measure, right? wrong so we even had to go one step further right because i can't really control how clients say yes or no to the meetings that's all individual to them so let's take a step back we ran the conservative numbers and we found that there was a 10 percent meeting book rate so for every 100 emails that went out 10 meetings got booked we were looking for 20 meetings on the calendar so we had our lead measure right there we realized we needed to send 200 cold emails a week consistently to get to our goal of five closes per week so that became our new lead measure. I wrote that on my to-do list and started sending 200 cold emails a week and we hit our goal that way, thanks to this process. So in your business, what are the lead measures you can use? For sales, that's a really good one, number of cold emails sent. Keep in mind the lead measure is something that's fully in your control and not the team's control. For the team, that actually brings us to number three, which is develop a player's scoreboard and coach's scoreboard. For X27, I've got this Excel doc that I look at that lists all of our clients, the current monthly retainer they're on, and then our goal retainer. Our goal right now is to get all of our clients to $10,000 a month. And I would use that to get our team engaged and to get them going. The thing that I didn't realize and the thing that this book highlighted is revenue and all of this stuff, that's a coach's scoreboard. Me as a coach, my business partner, we would see this and we'd be thrilled because we're entrepreneurs, right? We like seeing the money go up but the actual people on the team that are doing the day-to-day -day work, they aren't as involved in that part of the business. So we had to come up with a player's scoreboard, which is a scoreboard that lists out everything that the players need to do in order to succeed. And I'll actually show you what that looks like right here. So here is a player's scoreboard for Applato for outreach. So for outreach, we've got the number of contacts that we needed to come up with, the number of deliveries, replies, leads, and meetings. So lead metrics here, all the way down to the lag metric of meetings booked. All of the tasks are listed down here along with the due dates and heavy credit to the rest of my team for coming up with this entire strategy and implementing it. Those guys are the best. Once you have a players and a coaches scoreboard, the last thing to do is discipline number four is add twice weekly one-on-ones. So before my co-founder and I, we had a meeting once a week on Wednesdays, half hour meeting where we'd run through how the business is doing. After reading this book, I split it into two meetings. 
Now we meet once on Mondays for 15 minutes and once on Fridays for 15 minutes where we run through our player's scoreboard. The other thing I did is add a weekly one-on-one -on -one with Mariah, who's our biz dev, and every other hire that we have on our team is also gonna have a weekly one-on-one -on, -one on the calendar where we go through their player's scoreboard for every account that they're on and run through what those tasks are. Those are the four disciplines of execution. Implement those and you'll see your productivity and your efficiency go up a ton. Hopefully you got some value from this video. I'm Alex Berman from Experiment 27. Like this video if you wanna encourage this type of content and subscribe to this channel for more sales training and marketing videos. If you need marketing support for your digital agency, check out experiment27.co. Thanks.